Joe Shane has made it a point to address what is the weakest point for the New York Giants, and that is offensive line. Uh, and Joe Shane uh, and the New York Giants have signed uh, Mark Glowinski, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts, and then an old friend of Shane and Brian Dayball uh, and Jean Feliciano, uh, formerly of the Buffalo Bills. Feliciano, even a, a local product, uh, born in East Meadow, but Glowinski is more of the uh, is the bigger signing. Glowinski, really good right guard with the Indianapolis Colts the last few years. He uh, was signed to a three year contract worth twenty million dollars, eleven point four guaranteed. Feliciano, a one year contract. Uh, don't know the the money numbers on the Feliciano deal, but it, it gives him a chance to stay healthy after being really hurt the last couple of seasons. He started all 16 games in 2019, but injuries kept him off the field uh, for chunks of the last two seasons. He was only active for nine games last year because of a calf issue and a stint on the COVID list. Um, And he started six times splitting his snaps between right and left guard, but it sounds like he's going to be the center. Uh, And so that allows Nick Gates to recover if he is still on this roster, that is. Um, And that was a, very ugly looking injury. So it's possible that we never see Nick Gates again. Um, but either way, you're looking at Andrew Thomas at left tackle, left guard. The the early front runner is probably Shane Lemieux. But the good thing is, is I mean, who knows? Maybe even Nick Gates could be in that left guard mix as well. Um, and and also John Feliciano has a, has you know certainly history at left guard too. So there's flexibility there, but. Left guard, baby Lemieux, center John Feliciano, right guard Mark Lewinsky. And then for me, right tackle, the hope is that it can be uh, the number five pick of the draft in either Neal or Aquanu. That would be the hope, and I think it's possible. The Giants did sign Matt Gano, uh, I guess about a week ago, and he uh, was formerly of the Atlanta Falcons. And I think he's more competition uh, with Matt Pert. And Gano might be honestly the the backup swing tackle, but I don't really think that Gano is is in serious consideration for that right tackle spot. Now it could work itself out that way if the Giants don't land that big time right tackle in the draft. But the Giants are really making it a point to improve what is, besides quarterback, the most important position in football, you need to protect the quarterback. And the Giants have had an awful one for the last few years. And in Glowinski, really good in the run game. Really was a key in Jonathan Taylor's success. Uh, not as great in the pass game. You know, average, but exceptional in the run game. And that should help, you know, whether Saquon Barkley is here or not, whoever is running behind him, that's going to be big. Glowinski started, uh, started out with the Seattle Seahawks, uh, was weighed by the Seahawks uh, at the end of the 2017 season. And then Glowinski uh, – in his first season in 2018, got that starting right guard job and really ran with it. Uh, durable. Um, really, he only missed time uh, due to COVID. So that's good. And and these guys uh, were both drafted in 2015. Um, and as a matter of fact, they were both fourth round picks. Feliciano uh, pick 128 overall in that draft and Glow- Glowinski 134. So re- really weird how that works out. Um, but – I think what's good about Feliciano is, again, the fact that Brian Dayball uh, is very, you know, is used to him. And uh, the new offensive lineman, Bobby Johnson, also has worked with Feliciano in the last few years. He uh, was drafted by the Oakland Raiders and was there from 15 to 18. And then he signed um, with the Buffalo Bills uh, before the 2019 season uh, in what was a two-year deal. So it's interesting. Lewinsky ha- has really risen uh, in a major way with the Colts, whereas Feliciano already was a decent uh, interior lineman coming out of his time with the Oakland Raiders. And he actually had signed a three-year extension before this past season, but he was released by the Bills uh, just a few days ago. So that was an actual fit when it was when we saw that he was released. There was a lot of speculation that the Giants might go after him, and they have. So, you know, really, 
I, you just you have to feel good about the way that Joe Shane is approaching this. There isn't that much cap space, uh, and this is why the Giants, you know, have released Kyle Rudolph, released Devonte Booker, released Caden Smith, so on and so forth, and we're not able to resign. You know, obviously Evan Ingram, the, the time had come. Uh, for that relationship to end. But Evan Ingram signs with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Austin Johnson signs with the Chargers. Uh, And these should lead to some compensatory picks uh, in 2023, you know, more like fifth round, sixth round picks. Um, But it just goes to show the Giants, they just don't have really that much cap space. They were able to restructure the contracts of Sterling Shepard and Blake Martinez, uh, really due to their injuries that enabled that to happen. Um, I think that James Bradbury is likely on his way out, which is an unfortunate byproduct of the lack of money available to the Giants, and they're going to have to build through the draft. And I think that Shane knows that. He's not going to be a big player in free agency. And I think Lewinsky, uh, that's as much as he was willing to go in terms of you're not going to see uh, like a multi-year deal handed out. I mean, Feliciano, this is just a one-year contract, and I I would expect that the money isn't too much. Uh, But – Again, certainly a significant signing, uh, and if he can stay healthy, I think he'll help. As now, the Giants have really addressed that interior, which was just brutal. Really, really bad last season with Billy Price, Matt Skura, um, and Will Hernandez. So Will Hernandez, like that was a major disappointment, and he's a free agent, and he's on his way out. So uh, it's going to be a totally new look, pretty much, besides Andrew Thomas, There's, you know, even Shane Lemieux, like Shane Lemieux, you know, if he does come back healthy, there is probably going to be competition. He certainly will not be handed that left guard role. Um, But I I think that these are, you know, good signings. You you hear good things about Lewinsky, just the the fact that Feliciano uh, was with the Bills the last few years. And no one knows, no one knows Feliciano better than Dayball. So if if Shane and Dable had felt like, well, you know, he was on Buffalo, but we didn't love him, they wouldn't have brought him in. But so you trust – I mean, they've had their eyes on him for the last few years, and they trust him. So I think that's a good sign. And so now what seemed really daunting in terms of like how the Giants can be able to fix this offensive line, they're putting it together slowly but surely. It's getting there. Uh, and what will go a really long way is what happens in this draft. That's going to be really important, and I really think that there is an opportunity for Neil or Aquanu to fall to five. I think Aiden Hutchinson is going to be, you know, one of the top picks, and you know, you look at the Jets at four. You know, I, I think if they trust Makai Becton to be healthy, which is a risk, but I think you know uh, they're going to assume under the assumption that he will be healthy. Uh, they've made some other moves. They actually signed. Uh, a guard, uh, Lakin Tomlinson today. Uh, so I think that they, when you look at that team, there are bigger needs than offensive linemen. So you look at all that. And I think that there's a decent chance that at the very least, whether Shane goes for it or not, uh, that those guys will be available. And so this offensive line could look a lot better quickly, uh, which will be really key for Daniel Jones in what is a make or break season for him. Um, as, he tries to show that he can be the future quarterback of the New York Giants, which to this point, we just don't know. So again, the Giants bring in Mark Lewinsky, formerly of the Colts, who will be their starting right guard, and uh, John Feliciano, formerly of the Buffalo Bills, who it sounds like, even though he was mainly a guard for the Bills, did have four starts in the last few seasons as a center. And that's where I think we will find him as we head into the 2022 season. But so far, so good for Joe Shane as they're addressing a really, really big need in offensive line. 